Hello, and welcome to our session on how CoreLogic is replatforming over 10,000 Cloud Foundry app instances with KF on Anthos and GKE. I'm Micah Baker, product manager for KF, and I'm joined with our customer, Jeff Henry, uh, who will introduce himself in just a moment. I want to share an exciting agenda with you. It's actually covering some big topics at a high level to talk about uh, this journey that CoreLogic is going through. I'm excited to get started, and I'd love to introduce uh, Jeff. And if you could also give us a little bit of uh, background, Jeff, on CoreLogic as a company. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Micah. Um, as Micah said, my name is Jeff Henry, and I uh, lead the Cloud Solutions Group for CoreLogic. And what that is is basically the I um, build and operate the foundational platform services in our cloud environment and I also lead all of our modernization and migration uh, projects. And just so you, uh, those of you who don't know who CoreLogic is, CoreLogic provides uh, data, services, insights to all of the major mortgage lenders, insurance carriers, and real estate agents so that they can help their customers to, um, find, buy, and protect their homes. Um, we, we cover almost 100% of the U.S. housing market, um, and we serve probably about a million uh, real estate agents around the country. So it's, um, it's all about the property, and, um, you know, we are, you know, the, the, we're looking to uh, make sure that our services and our data are served up on the right kind of platform, and that's kind of why I'm here today, Micah. Awesome. Thanks so much, uh, Jeff, for giving us a little bit of background uh, on CoreLogic. It sounds like uh, there are regulations to deal with, and you probably have some very specific objectives that you're trying to accomplish. So um, I'd love it if you could kind of talk through the primary objectives you had, the business drivers um, and strategy at play here uh, with your journey off of Cloud Foundry. Do you mind talking through that? Sure. Yeah, I think... Um... You know, the first and foremost uh, area that we're trying to achieve here, the objective we're trying to achieve is we want to secure our long-term, scalable, um, efficient application hosting environment that's based on Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes has been around for a long time. We're not on it. We want to be on it. And uh, we want to make sure that when we do uh, start hosting our applications on Kubernetes in production for our customers. It's it's the best platform it can be. That's the kind of biggest reason we have a lot of application hosting platforms today, and we want to make sure that our future one is is solid. Um, the other thing is, you know, uh, we want to make sure we have a pretty deep um, relationship with Google, and we want to make sure we capitalize on that. Uh, that was part of this this adventure, and then. I think equally important is whatever we do, we want to make sure that the experience that our developers and our operators have on their current platforms is um, at least as good, but obviously should be better um, than what they have today. Mm. I, I, I particularly love um, that you're calling out explicitly uh, protecting the application team, the developer and the operator, uh, making sure that they're not severely disrupted because change management is an art, I think, more than a science. Um, and so as much as we can get excited about strategic goals like Kubernetes, which we definitely uh, appreciate and uh, hear about all the time, but how you get go about doing that transition is just as important and that will be the um, aftertaste for the, for the teams. So I, I really appreciate that. Um, before we get into more of the content on uh, CoreLogic's uh, journey, I just wanted to quickly level set on a few of the product names that we're going to be talking about. So KF is a product that Google built from the ground up uh, natively for Kubernetes to give a Cloud Foundry experience uh, for developers and operators without them having to learn anything about Kubernetes. So that's its, its purpose, and so it fits right in with uh, the objectives, uh, Jeff, that you just mentioned earlier. So uh, people are used to using a CLI called CF, uh, if they had a command like CF push, then they use a command KF push uh, instead. 
what it looks like in a big picture view is replatforming. So we take these workloads that are Cloud Foundry specific, running on uh, the, the legacy Cloud Foundry infrastructure that's VM-based called Bosch. And uh, we just want to take those same applications and deploy them on Kubernetes. And that's where uh, KF comes in. So we're making minimal changes uh, higher up the stack for the developer and operator, uh, but more of the significant change happens at the platform level uh, while we're trying to abstract it away from those application teams. And then when we talk about Anthos, we're talking about uh, GKE outside of Google Cloud. So customers may need uh, a GKE experience in other public clouds. They may need it on uh, on-prem data centers uh, or attached clusters, et cetera. Uh, so this is the platform that KF may or may not need to use. Uh, KF could work just on GKE. Uh, in this case, CoreLogic is using Anthos for on-prem workloads as well. So KF is running on Anthos on-prem in addition to uh, GKE. So uh, Jeff, as we mentioned at the beginning, um, there's always going to be some unexpected um, challenges that come along with any major project. Uh, this has significant scope, so it's not a surprise that there were some challenges uh, uh, that we've run into along the way. Um, could you give a, a quick summary of how you see these challenges uh, as they relate to like the objectives we talked about earlier? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, one of the objectives I mentioned was finding a new sort of uh, platform where we, uh, that's based on Kubernetes and, you know, there isn't, really hasn't been that many challenges there. Uh, we. we Kubernetes has been around for a while. GKE is, is pretty solid. Um, so that has, I mean, obviously there's challenges with everything you do, but nothing nothing huge to talk about there. It was more about um, making sure we have a smooth transition, right? And from one platform to another, some of the things that we found there are, you know, the, the existing platform has some things that come out of the box like caching. Uh, we use Redis for caching. It comes out of the box in our current platform. It does not come out of the box in Anthos, KF, GKE. So we've had to come up with a, an alternative for that. It's Redis Enterprise. And getting that installed and configured and working with KF and seamlessly um, transitioning from an, an application from using Redis out of the box to using uh, this new form of Redis, it was a bit of a challenge. Some of the other things that we've seen are, um, you know, even with some of the things that do come, quote, out of the box, or in the box, uh, like config server, um, configuring that foundational component of the platform is not something that happens very often, and figuring out how to do that in the new platform versus the old, a uh, bit of a challenge there. And then I think even bigger than both of those maybe was trying to make sure that our CICD automation um, was seamless. And to make it seamless, we we have to change the actual script and the commands that are in those scripts. And you know that has been one of the bigger parts of the effort. Those are, those, thanks for those uh, summaries, Jeff. I think those are really uh, helpful. I, I recall the, um, the Redis caching in particular uh, being an interesting challenge because the applications were pre-configured at the time they were deployed uh, on Cloud Foundry with the uh, out-of-the-box Redis that came with that to not use uh, uh, encryption because it was already on an isolated network. But um, introducing TLS encryption for those same applications without changing the applications, that's a, a fun challenge. But uh, that was an example where we were able to leverage the Anthos ecosystem with Anthos Service Mesh uh, to automatically upgrade those applications to use TLS encryption for anything uh, that they communicate to the Redis Enterprise cluster. Uh, so no app code changes were required for that. Uh, but that was a very interesting challenge. And then, uh, as you said, with config server, uh, getting it up and running is straightforward, but making sure that you have the same configuration that was in, in use before with the uh, with the old foundation and the way the apps were using it, uh, that could be another story just because it's not something that you're working on every day. And so finding uh, knowledge experts uh, who understand how it was all connected uh, originally might be a challenge. Um, but these are good examples of the, the kind of challenges that uh, 
we've run into and been able to resolve quickly. Uh, it's a good example of working together uh, through the broader ecosystem uh, to address those. But I'm sure this won't be the end of our uh, challenges that we run, we run into, uh, and we'll continue to uh, address things, uh, whatever comes up in the future. Um, could you talk a little bit, Jeff, about uh, what led you to uh, trying to meet your objectives that we talked about earlier with uh, KF and Anthos on GKE, and um, maybe some about the, the timeline and uh, what happens next? Sure. Um, well, I think, you know, you've kind of been talking about it a little bit with your description of KF um, and some of my comments, but, you know, the KF, we believe that KF is going to provide us, is the, is the avenue to get to that smooth transition that I've been talking about, right? So it's, it's if, if we were to make the jump to Kubernetes, just cloud native Kubernetes directly from where we are today, it would be a little bit more difficult to say the least and KF provides that smooth transition for us. And the other piece, you know, the reasons why we're kind of going the way we're going is we have a very deep partnership with, with you guys, with Google and um, it's a good one. And GKE is, uh, a solid platform for Kubernetes where we feel like we can gain the operational efficiency that we're looking for. Um, and then those two things combined, I think that um, we're really kind of seeing that we have a shorter migration timeline ahead of us than we might have otherwise. Um, and so this is a, you know, a bit of a, a, a snapshot of that, uh, that timeline. We, We've been working, you know, for the better part of this year on getting the foundational components like networking and other sort of layers of the architecture and design set, building out the platform and, and getting it to a point where right now we're actually working on, I mentioned the issues or the challenges that we had with some of the out of the box um, backing services, one of which was our caching um, tooling. Uh, right now we're working on making sure that we have an alternative smooth transitional um, uh, way forward on all of the backing services. And so that's kind of what we're doing now. And then leading into the rest of Q3 and Q4, um, we've got to do all of the testing that we need to do. The functional testing, we've kind of gotten through most of that. And we're coming up on now doing some really um, chaos testing and, and performance testing to make sure this, the, the platform is solid. And then, as you can see, we're expecting that we'll go through several waves or tranches of, of migration um, efforts next year, and that will last us pretty much throughout the full year. Great. I, I think that uh, breaking it into these, these cohorts uh, based on the characteristics of the applications is uh, very strategic and also uh, planning for a self-service migration driven by the application teams um, is also a good way to balance the availability of the platform team um, with the investment needed from an application team since they still need to be able to adopt the thing that they're migrating to. Um, where do you see, like this is, uh, KF is just like part of the, the overall journey and it's certainly not like the only uh, workload. Where do you see this going over time? Like we finished this timeline uh, that we're seeing here. Uh, what's your longer term objective for these workloads after you get them to Kubernetes? Um, well, so these workloads are, that we're kind of focusing on here in this conversation are cloud native applications, right, that run um, that run in in a in that type of hosting environment. We're mimicking that with KF and on top of Kubernetes here, and that's kind of what we're focused on. But the the GKE platform that we're building that um, that we have the Anthos framework around is really bigger than that. It's meant to also host our um, off the shelf software that we intend to, as, as more uh, vendors provide off the shelf software that's deployable in Kubernetes, we intend to use it for that. Um, you know, we intend to use it for our burstable analytical workloads that are 
you know, um, batch type of workloads that don't fit in a cl cloud foundry, you know, KF uh, world. So we're looking to use GKE um, and Anthos for all of our workloads, not just the KF based workloads, but some of these other ones that I've mentioned and, and we're really looking forward to it. And I think we'll be doing that, um, kind of proving those out in parallel with this migration plan next year. So that's um, that's the story, Micah. I appreciate and you know thank you very much for letting me tell it to you, and thanks for your partnership on this effort. Thank you too, Jeff. Uh, this was really enlightening. Um, I think a lot of folks will benefit from hearing about your journey. It's certainly top of mind for a lot of people uh, trying to figure out how do I get from uh, point A to point B and land on Kubernetes. It's uh, quite a lot to uh, figure out for a lot of different uh, customers. Um, so thanks for uh, joining us, uh, all of our viewers. Uh, hope that you appreciated uh, this session and hope that you enjoy the rest of your time at Google Next 21.